Hi and welcome to spotlight video number 10. Apologies for the slight delay in releasing the spotlight video. Again, we had a lot of documents that we released yesterday that took a tiny bit longer than expected. But now let's get right into the updates. So first and probably most important this week is that we have an upcoming deadline for the second version of the robot model submission. So please note that in addition to the fixes that were requested by the meta reviewer, you also need to provide one or two additional uh, files this time. So if you're playing in kit size, you're also requested to um, submit a link to a YouTube video that shows your simulated robot standing up. And no matter in which league you're playing, so kid size and adult size, need to provide a Docker image with a simple walking behavior of your robot. You will find further instructions and clarifications on the robot model specification document that we released yesterday. Please pay special attention to that. We have some other minor requests to teams. So first of all, teams are now requested to mark a hand specifically in the robot model, which is used for the convex hull calculations in the auto referee. And we also require all teams that use uh, clates under their feet to actually model the bounding boxes using capsules or spheres. So this is a hard requirement. You cannot use a different shape to model those cleats. And this is because of computational constraints. Please note that the Docker images that are required for the walking, you do not have to submit via our official submission system. Instead, you will receive instructions on how to push to our official container registry in the upcoming days. And you will find further instructions on how this pushes to the container registry uh, work also in the newly released server specifications that we also released yesterday evening. We had initially planned to make an update of the auto referee available last Friday with an updated behavior of the forceful contact detection. However, we only had minor changes in the software compared to the last release. So we decided to skip this release and instead make one final release this coming Wednesday. So this coming Wednesday, May 19th, we are planning to release the full version of the auto referee. So from then on, we're only expecting minor bug fixes to happen in the auto referee. We have, as I said before, updated several documents yesterday. One of them is the server specifications. There we have mostly updated some information for teams to make it easier to recreate our setup. So we have now added detailed instructions on how you can create your own um, server virtual machine, how you are um, connecting your client to the server virtual machine, and also how you can push Docker images to the AWS container registry, which we are using for the competition. To push to the container, container registry, you do require an access token, which we will distribute to team leaders in the coming days. The last document that we updated is the controller API specifications. So this specifications handles um, or documents the API, which we use for the robot controller to send updates, motor updates to the robot on the field and also receive sensor input back from that robot on the field. This document now includes some more documentation exactly on how those up sensor updates can be um, retrieved from the simulated robot. And most important, probably for the teams, we have now committed to a final bandwidth limitation per team. So we can now confirm with all the benchmarking we've run in the last couple of days that every team will have a 350 Mbit per second bandwidth. So this is per team. So depending on how many robots you specify you want to play with in your team JSON config, this number of 350 is divided by two in adult size if you want to play with two robots and four in kid size if you want to play with four robots. 
but can also be divided by three, for example, if you decide to play with less robots on the field. If you do play with four robots on the field, this bandwidth still allows you to request images of size 800 by 600 with a um, time step of every 16 milliseconds, which is a little bit more than we initially promised, and which is something we're very happy that we can now confirm that this will be possible with the infrastructure we have committed to now. We have also made some other minor updates to this document that contain, uh, concern mostly the team JSON. So also check that part out in the API specifications. For example, we've added a new post, a goalkeeper starting post. So also make sure you check out the changes there to make sure that you have all required information in your new team JSON file. Then just a quick reminder that the mock competition signup is still ongoing. So if you want to test your robot controllers under realistic tournament conditions from June 4th to June 6th, which is the weekend, the first weekend in June, then you can still sign up for this. Sign up is via the normal submission system of the Humanoid League. Participation is completely free of charge if you are anyway registered to the RoboCup Humanoid League. Um, and you will be allowed to play with robot models that have not fully passed robot inspection under the assumption that your robot model is not breaking simulations and also not slowing down simulations significantly. The submission closes May 21st, which is this Friday, and then we will provide further information and particularly an event schedule by May 28th, which will detail exactly when you'll be playing games, how the uh, games will be streamed, and so on. This already brings me to the upcoming deadlines. So starting tomorrow, May 19th, we will have the final release of the auto referee. And then, as I just said, on May 21st, which is this Friday, the sign up for the mock competition closes. Next Monday, May 24th, we are expecting another update of the server specification document. This will then particularly contain more information on the robot robot communication and the usage of UDP. Um, if we are able to provide some form of UDP multicast in the cloud, or if we have to go back to unicast. So you'll receive more information on this by um, next Monday. On May 28th, which is Friday in a week, we will announce the schedule of the mock competition and some uh, further updates on how to participate, how to um, provide your robot control software, where the games will be streamed and so on. So stay, stay tuned for that. And then the mock competition is going to be the first weekend of June, 4th to 6th. Fourth to and even if you're not participating with your team, of course, you're welcome to uh, watch the games and see what others are doing. Um, already a word of warning, there might still be a lot of things going wrong, not just in the team software, but also from our organizer side. This is another reason why we do the mock competition. So be a little bit patient with us over this weekend. Uh, June 7th, which is the day after the mock competition, the official team registration with the 2021 Robocop event as a whole ends. So make sure that you have your team registered by June 7th. And then June 11th is the final submission of the robot models in case that your team has not passed the second round of robot model submissions. So only then you need to provide an updated version by June 11th, the latest. For all teams who have already passed, they need to, um, from May 23rd onwards, request um, updates in um, terms of a written email to the TC, as we've communicated before. So this is all I had for today. Um, if you watch the video in time, of course, you're welcome to come to our uh, late office hour session today. Uh, you'll receive another newsletter on Thursday. And if you have any questions in the meantime, don't hesitate to ask us on Discord or also on the forum. And I'll see you with some more updates specifically on the server specifications and the communication in the cloud next Monday.